So this right in front of me is the GTX 1070. And to me, this is the best GPU to buy for $100. And there's a ton of reasons why I say this, but the GTX 1070 is still a very solid option for a lot of people. You're gonna be seeing later that this GPU is still very capable in a ton of different games and even higher games, which are more graphically intense. There's still a lot of performance to come from this GPU. So why do I think this is the perfect GPU to buy at $100? Well, one, these are really cheap, obviously, to the performance that you're gonna be getting. So yes, $100 is not a lot for a GPU. I mean, GPUs nowadays go for $300 to $600, but this GPU is really cheap and it still gives a ton of great performance. So the GTX 1070 actually has really similar performance to the RTX 3050, which yeah, and a lot of people don't have the best opinions on it, but for a $100 GPU, and that GPU, the RTX 3050 normally goes for like $300, $400, this is pretty good for $200 less. And since you're gonna be getting very similar performance, I honestly would recommend getting this over the RTX 3050. Obviously the RTX 3050 does have its benefits, but for most people, the performance that you're gonna be getting from this GPU is just worth the money. And obviously you're not gonna be finding this GPU in any store. You're not gonna be able to buy this new anymore. So you will have to buy it at places like Facebook Marketplace or even eBay. But since the 10 series cards were very popular, there's actually a ton of people still selling the GTX 1070. So this is not one of the GPUs that are like super hard to find and only some people can get it. I bet you that in your local area, you're still gonna be able to find a ton of options you can buy from. So moving on to the key specs of this graphics card, it has a base clock of 1,506 megahertz that does boost up to 1,683 megahertz. It also has eight gigabytes of VRAM and it has 1,920 CUDA cores. The TDP for this GPU is 150 watts, so it does actually recommend getting a 500 watt power supply and it also has an eight pin connector. So if you are looking to get this GPU, make sure the PSU that you actually have does have an eight pin connector. And this GPU is seven years old now. It was launched in June 10th, 2016, which, wow, it's honestly really crazy. So before we actually get into the benchmarks of this GPU, I will have to show you guys what the test bench we're gonna be using. So for the CPU, we're using the i7-8700K, which has six cores and 12 threads. And yes, the CPU is pretty old, but it still is a very good matchup with the GTX 1070. We're also rocking 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 RAM at 2400 megahertz. And I know the RAM speeds aren't the fastest, but since we are on Intel, it shouldn't be as big as if we were on Ryzen. And on top of that, the RAM is in dual channel, so we'll be getting the best performance possible. We also have a 256 gigabyte Kingston SSD for the storage. And for the motherboard, we have a gigabyte H310M S2H GSM. And last but not least, we have the Thermaltake 500 watt power supply. So I actually did build this PC a couple months ago. And although it is older parts, it's still running really well and still able to edit all the videos and the games that I play. So the games that we're gonna be benchmarking today is Fortnite, GTA 5, Valorant, Dying Light, Battlefield 5, Cyberpunk, PUBG, F1 2022, Warzone, and Apex Legends. The first four games that I mentioned will be benchmarked on this PC, but for the rest of the games, we're gonna be using an online source just because I actually don't own that many games. And I want you guys to get a variety of different games to see what their performance is like. So let's get on to the benchmarks. Okay, so first game we got here is Fortnite, and I'm not really too surprised that we're getting over 200 FPS right now. The settings that we are running are on DX12, and we are running on all low settings with a far view distance. This is pretty much what competitive settings are. Are, but most people do play on performance mode but as you guys can see we're pretty much getting 200 fps the entire time and we aren't even playing on performance mode so if you do want to play a little bit more competitively a lot of people do play on performance mode since it does give you lower latency and more stable fps but the performance you're getting here is pretty good i mean the game does look a lot better when you are playing on dx12 and honestly for a lot of people this is already more than enough the performance you're going to be getting with this card is very very good i mean i wasn't expecting anything lower than this just because this game is pretty easy to run it is an esports title and yeah, as you guys can see, performance is very solid. Even when getting into fights, the FPS is still really high. I mean, it does go under 200 here, but as I said, if you do change some settings, you can easily get it to be more stable. I mean, runs pretty well, so let's move on to the next game. Okay, so next game we have here is GTA 5. We are playing on all ultra settings and easily we're getting over 80 FPS, which is pretty impressive. I mean, as you guys know, this GPU is quite old. And since we are even getting over 80 FPS on such an old GPU is pretty good. GTA 5 is also an older game as well well and it is could be considered a esports title but honestly it looks really good the performance is still really great and a lot of people don't even play gta 5 at ultra settings i mean it does add a lot of latency so a lot of people do still play on like medium low settings which you'll easily be able to get over 100 fps but yeah performance is still very good i mean it does drop down when you get into this car here and i think when more things load in it does get a little bit laggy but overall performance is very solid i mean i'm kind of just doing normal gta stuff anyways you know they're kind of just driving around hitting people 
people. So not really surprising as well. A lot of these esports titles are still going to run great with over 100 FPS, depending on your settings. And GTA is honestly nothing different. You're going to be able to do all the heists and all the things that you want to do. So on to the next game. Okay, so next game we got here is Valorant. And honestly, this game can pretty much run on any computer. We're easily getting over 240 FPS on max settings. So not really surprised at all about this. I mean, it's an esports title. So it's one of the easiest games to run for sure. And yeah, I mean, if you do play on competitive settings, which is pretty much just all low and pretty much everything set to off, easily could even get like 500 FPS. Like I really wouldn't be surprised if that's possible. But Valorant isn't too surprising. I mean, pretty much everyone is expecting performance like this. If it was any lower, I'd honestly be kind of worried. Pretty expected performance. Let's get on to the next game. Okay, so next up here, we got Dying Light. And this is a little bit more graphically intense, but still the GTX 1070 still runs this very well. We are in all max settings. And as you guys can see, we are over 150 FPS in most situations. So pretty impressive stuff. I mean, this game isn't the most graphically intense compared to others, but still it does look pretty good, especially when you have it maxed out and you are getting over 100 FPS. So the experience is very, very clean, especially if you have a high refresh rate monitor. Even when getting into more graphically intense areas where, you know, you have a lot of things happening, it's a little bit darker, the zombies around, still over 100 FPS. So the experience you're going to be getting at maxed out settings is really good. All right. And for the next few games here, what I'm going to do instead of doing a voiceover is just show you guys what the performance and FPS is going to be like, just so it doesn't take too long. Okay, so as you guys can see, the GTX 1070 is still a very capable GPU for a ton of different people. It still gives really good performance for the price you're paying. And honestly, if you're on a budget, this is the GPU that I would definitely recommend. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Peace.